Welcome to today's functional group update for the platform backend team. Uh, my name is Zao Man and I'm the engineering manager. And today, uh, as it says there, and as I hope you are aware, it is the 1st of May 2018. Um, the last update was actually only three weeks ago. Usually we do five, but because of some moving around of updates, it has only been three weeks. So not all that much has happened since, but we did release GitLab 10.7 on April 22nd. Of course, the platform team contributed a lot of things to this release, and the blog post that I've linked to uh, covers that in, in, in great detail. But there were a couple of things that I don't think deserved quite the attention they, um, or <laughs> didn't quite get the attention they deserved. So I wanted to correct that with this slide. A couple of things I think are very much worth mentioning. On the one hand, uh, we have the create commit API that now respects LFS tracking rules, which means that if you use the API to create a file, upload a file with a certain extension, and we know that that file should be tracked by LFS, instead of just putting the file in the repository anyway, uh, we actually on the back end go through the trouble of uploading it to LFS, and the file that ends up in the repo is just the LFS pointer. Thanks, James, at First Jones for uh, working on this. We also have better LDAP connection failure hand um, that the LDAP should fit a couple times. And when it still doesn't work after a couple retries, if we still cannot connect to LDAP, we interpret that as um, the user no longer existing in LDAP, which in the past used to, would result in either being blocked or being removed from a group, those kinds of things. Um, now we are a little bit better about realizing that it's just a connection failure and that we will have another chance uh, down the line. Uh, of course, if there's a certain time period where we haven't been able to verify if the user should still have access to certain resources, we do block them, but not just because there is a momentary connection error. Um, the listing personal project is also very quickly. Uh, you can see this both in the actual Thank you, Tiago. The archive projects, uh, which in the past only had a read only repository, are now completely readly. There are issues, there are merge requests, you cannot comment, you cannot change, you cannot create anything in there, um, which makes them a lot more archived than they previously were. And this is something that Bob worked on. Then in the next five weeks, um, hopefully the next update will be in five weeks, so this should cover everything that happens until then. The first thing we're going to do on May 7th is finalize the development of GitLab 10.8, which we released on the 20th. And a couple of the things that are going to be in that release are listed here. I'm not going to go into too much detail because of the links and read up um, all about them there. But one I wanted to call out, which might sound all too interesting, is import and mirroring related columns moved out of the projects table. Um, projects that are mirrored, that are mirrored, projects on GitLab that are mirrors of an external project hosted on some other repository, uh, of course, update frequently. They update on some schedule. Um, oh, Uh, apparently, I'm having some connection issues. Let me just retry sharing the um, sh slides. And otherwise, I hope that everyone will just um, be able to read the slides for themselves and go from there. But give me one sec. I'll try to restart this. And we're going to give it another try. OK. I think you should see my screen again. If not, then please let me know. I'm also going to open up the chat window again so I can know if someone says something's broken. All right, Bob says we're back. I guess that's good news. Um, so yeah, no, I was talking about uh, import and mirroring related columns moved out of the project table. On GitLab.com, we have a lot of projects that are mirrors of externally hosted projects. And periodically, GitLab will sync up and get any latest changes from those remote resources, those remote locations. Um, and we have a lot of those projects doing that. And every time they do that, they go through a couple of state transitions. They go from scheduled to be updated, currently updating, updating finished, or updating failed. And at some point, they go back through that cycle again. And we're pretty much constantly doing that for um, at this point around 15 different 15 mirrors per second that get updated and this of course means that there's a lot of um, actual updates to the status field happening in the database right now these status fields are stored right on the projects table which is a quite large table which stores a lot of project related data mostly settings and some cache stuff but it's still quite a wide table with lots of columns. And that means that every time that we just switch the state from one value to another, we actually write a whole new row into Postgres and mark the other one as, as old, as still, um, which means that we are actually accumulating a lot of old, still data because we're doing this in this really big table. So one thing we're going to do is to move these fields to a separate table, which will be much smaller, which will only store mirroring and import-related data, uh, which means that if we update it as frequently as we do, we will 
will not be building this huge amount of steel rows. So this will be, you will be able to see this not directly in the application, but hopefully you'll be able to experience the performance um, benefits and just, uh, you know, everything on GitHub.com will be a little bit faster. Hopefully you won't notice, which means that everything's going right. Uh, and there's a couple more issues there that you might want to check out if you're interested in specifically what we're doing for 10.8. Then on May 8th, we will be kicking off development of GitLab 11.0. What's going to go in there is not quite clear yet, but it will be announced on a public kickoff on May the 8th. And this is uh, available to everyone. Everyone can join. If you check out that link, you will be able to see the details of where you can follow along. Um, and then another happy event that's going to take place in the next couple of weeks is that Imre Farkas will be joining the team as a senior developer on May 9th. And I would like to uh, specifically thank Thanks, Jan, who uh, I think worked with him previously and who referred him to GitLab. And as Sean mentioned to me a couple of times, when Jan referred Imre, he told Sean he's a pretty good developer. And Sean immediately said, like, oh, yeah, if Jan thinks he's pretty good, we have to get him. Uh, and it turns out that he is absolutely great. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to having him join the team. Um, that's everything that I had to share for now. Like I mentioned, it's only been three weeks since the last update, so not too much has happened. Hopefully the next update will be a little bit more interesting. If anyone has any questions though, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And if not, I'm gonna give everyone about 10 seconds um, and then I will give you about 23 minutes of your day left. Back.